Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson. I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And today I'm gonna show you a brief excerpt from one of our sessions on ergonomics. Hope you enjoy this session. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the ergonomics uh, on the bench. Uh, with uh, This is our version of a simulation system. This is the Kilgore pole and you, you loosen the pole by just going one direction and there you notice it has a flat end on it. And the flat end is meant to be the place where the screw on the Typodont goes. And that keeps it from rotating, right? Now, you can move it up this way, you can turn it, you can rotate it, you can basically get any position you like. It's actually really, uh, very versatile, okay? I'm gonna utilize an Acadental Typodont. This is a Maja Pro 1. It's a great system. Um, I think it's probably the, the Typodont that a lot of schools are going with now uh, because of its versatility. These are called carrier trays. They're magnetized, and these little replacement arches can be purchased for them, and they click into place. They're used by the Reb exam. They're used by uh, many dental schools. A lot of dental schools are switching over to this system because of its versatility to be able to use, be used in pros, endo, and in operative dentistry, restorative dentistry. So it's a very versatile system. So you notice here I have this little lock ring, and this is on all your Typodonts. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put this little lock ring inside the hole, and then you can, back here, find the flat spot, okay? So you see there's that flat part right there. And just go ahead and move it down about mm, two inches from the top and then tighten it like that. Okay? What position is this supine. when a patient's like this? Supine. Supine, exactly. And what position is this called? Reclined. Reclined. Right. We're going to go ahead and, like I said, just that's the movement you need. L loosen and tighten. And keep an eye on where that little notch is. All right. So now we've assembled... The, the, the mannequin type it on, but now we need to put a head on. This, this particular head has uh, jaws on it. It's a very restrictive type of system to work in. Uh, it was originally intended to just be used like this or to be used with a more of a soft skin. Um, I'm gonna show you the Fletcher mask, which is a very hard skin, but this, this is a, a decent system. There's also some that come with very small extensions, like these little Maillard processes. This is an entire mandible. And then, of course, the head. There, underneath here is a, is a, a screw. This is cast aluminum. So, so we're gonna go ahead and insert that the same way, and it's gonna slide all the way down on top. Okay, there. And then I tighten it. And now we've got a pretty decent mannequin assembly. Um, it's pretty well retracted, so if I want to work on the side of teeth, I've got pretty good access. You can see here, I can get access to that first molar really easily, maybe even the second molar, okay? So this is, this is kind of an artificial sort of situation, and I think it would be good for you to see the worst possible case scenario. And that is this. This, this is Fletcher. This is good old Fletcher, and Fletcher is going to be placed on top of the mannequin head assembly. And by now the whole system's really heavy, okay? So you've got to clamp the, the heck out of it to make it uh, really stable, okay? So we kind of orient the, the skin over the, over the head, and then we're gonna zip his head on, his skin onto his head, okay? I'm gonna zip that on there all the way down. So this is as tough as it gets, guys. The hardest mannequin in the whole country is right here. He's got the skin on all the way, and he's got the jaws. So this puppy is really restrictive, okay? So if we can navigate this, you can navigate anything. Time there. Okay, so I'm sitting right now at what o'clock? At what o'clock? o'clock. I'm now sitting at what, what o'clock? One o'clock. One o'clock. I'm a right-handed operator. Am I allowed to sit at one o'clock? No. True. Can you work at... 7 o'clock. Yes. 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 But the problem with 7 o'clock, you're seeing it here. What's happening? I'm hitting something. I'm hitting the table. 
And even in a, in a system that has a very expensive ADAC or Nevin system, you won't be able to back up, okay? The only thing you can do to simulate seven o'clock is to loosen the rod and move the head over like this, okay? So now I'm at seven o'clock. And seven o'clock is actually a pretty good way to work on mandibular molars, mandibular incisors from seven o'clock with a patient reclined, okay? So generally speaking, you can do everything in the mouth from the 11 or 12 o'clock position with the patient fully reclined, okay? In other words, in their supine position. And when we use the mouth mirror and we use the handpiece, we have two different items, one hand and the other hand. We want to have the tooth, the mirror, and the handpiece in the same line. We don't want to have the mirror off to the side while we're operating because the problem with that is that left doesn't necessarily mean left in the mirror. In other words, distal doesn't mean distal, and mesial doesn't mean mesial. When you line up the burr, when you move to the left or move to the distal in this case, that means distal in the mirror. So what you see is what you get. You don't get something where while you're moving distally, you're moving away from the mirror, while you're mesially moving towards the mirror, but kind of at an angle, you can get a lot of distorted information that way. So if you want to simplify your life, you want to just have your handpiece and your mirror and the tooth all in the same plane so I'm looking into the mirror, okay? If I'm going to approach the maxillary teeth for interior crowns or interior fillings, I'm always going to be sitting at 11 or 12 o'clock. It's just a beautiful position to sit at. I can use my mirror to shine light on the case. I can use the mirror to provide me with maybe a little bit of information about how I'm holding my finger rest or how I'm positioning my, my, my handpiece along the long axis of the tube. I can turn the, the handpiece and the burr to the inside. Looking in the mirror directly, I can perform a class three preparation very simply like this, okay? So um, I'm lining everything up so it's actually quite easy. While I'm prepping the lingual of a PFM, I may get a little closer. I'm gonna keep my elbows in pretty tight. I don't know, maybe Ermi, you can show that. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping my elbows in pretty tight like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe get a little bit closer. My feet are firmly on the deck. My thighs are parallel to the floor. And now I can move the handpiece distally and measly in the mirror and I can see exactly what's happening. Now the mirror is being kind of clogged up by information in front of the mirror. So if you were to take a shot, Ermi, from everything that's happening, don't get distracted by this. All of this is noise right here. Everything you see right now is noise. The only thing that matters is what's in the mirror, okay? And that's the hard part. It's a matter of knowing where to look and knowing what to focus on and let your mind block everything out, okay? So it takes some time to get used to this, but it's very comfortable, even though there's a lot of information in the, in, in the view, right? There are my hands, there's the patient, there's the, the teeth, the handpiece, the, everything's going on, but all I'm interested in is the little view that you can see right there. In fact, I'm not even gonna see the whole mirror view. Why? Because it's being blocked by the handpiece, partially. So I don't even get that view, I get this view. You see what I mean? That's the view I get. That's not very much, is it? The handpiece is in the way, and yet, you know what? That's all you need. And sometimes it's a matter of just getting used to that and being okay with that. Is it possible for me to work on premolar teeth at the 12 o'clock position? We've talked about anterior teeth on the maxilla. Absolutely, premolar tooth, we can position our, our finger rest on the buckle of maybe the second premolar, and we can go ahead and prep the first premolar. We can put our finger inside and retract the cheek a little bit. We can get access to the second premolar, first premolar, the canine. All of that can be done here by putting finger rest on the patient's teeth and not face. I don't need to put them on the face, although it's common to see people like this, you know, whatever it takes, because you're working on a 
test situation. It's a little intense. It's actually harder to work on mannequin than it is to work on patient. It really is. Okay, so can I work on the lingual with this particular technique? See me retract the cheek here, place my finger on the buckle as a finger rest, and then utilize a modified pen grasp, and then go ahead and use the mirror like this. Okay, you can see that I can prep just fine. Everything's lined up, left is left, right is right. I can use it on the distal tooth. I can use it on the second molar. Now watch what happens on the second molar. Your finger rest is gonna be anterior to where you're working, not posterior to where you're working. In the anterior, your finger rest will be posterior to where you're working. So generally, I'll put my finger rest probably about the first molar. If I am working on the first molar itself, then I'll put my finger rest behind it. Or if I can't get any finger rest this way, I could also use finger rest on the opposite side of the arch by stabilizing the handpiece head thusly. I want you to see this. So I'm retracting the cheek with the mirror or with the finger. I'm getting the, uh, the mirror in there if I really need it, but in this case, I'm gonna work on the buckle. You notice how I can use the, my finger on this side over here? Isn't that interesting? You ever thought of doing that? See, I'm pivoting off my finger here, and I'm using the finger of the opposite hand to stabilize the handpiece, yeah? Okay, so pretty much everything on the, on the maxilla is pretty easy from this position with the exception of buckles. So if you have a class five on a premolar or molar, that's when you have to make a modification. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the patient to the left, maybe 30 degrees, 25, 30 degrees. It's very comfortable, by the way, patients like moving. They're like, you can move over here. They're like, oh, great. Because they've been frozen in one position. And now what I can do is I can take the tissue and I can retract the tissue, use a finger rest on the, on the retracting hand, get the handpiece in position, and then put my finger that's retracting on the handpiece head and I can work with no finger rest on this arm at all. All my finger rest is getting to me through the index finger on this hand, retracting, and then on to the hand this way and you can make very fine motor movements this way. It's very interesting. Okay, so I'm working 11 o'clock, and yet I'm, I'm retracting, and I can work on the second molar, I can work on the third molar, okay? In this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little finger rest on the molar, so I'm buying the finger rest from the other hand, borrowing it, if you will, okay? When I would use the mannequin at seven o'clock, yeah? When do we wanna be seven? But we want to be seven, and we can kind of turn mannequin this way, right? Do you see what's happening? I'm, I'm putting the, the rod into the slot, and the rod's in the slot, and I can tighten it now. And now what I can do is I can go direct vision from seven o'clock. And this is an amazing view. I can retract. In fact, this is one of the easiest views there is. Keep your elbows down. And now do you see how I'm working right here on the first molar? So you can see right here that I can line up the burr with the long axis of the tooth. So the curve of Wilson is turning this way, right? The curve of Wilson is leaning the teeth towards, towards the lingual, correct? Towards the midline, I should say. And then we can then take, we can do our reduction planes here. These would be our C planes. We can do our A plane. We can turn the handpiece over the other way and Finger rest on the anterior teeth, and we can do our B planes. Easy. We can also do our line of draw. We can establish our buckle reduction. We can then establish our lingual reduction. Sometimes to do the lingual reduction, you need to get the mirror in there. So I like to put the mirror over across the back of the teeth like this, get the mirror in there to retract the tissue, and then I can use the, the, um, the handpiece this way by looking in the mirror. There you I'm go. Actually, See that? That's it. So I can do a lot from this lingual view. Once I have the lingual view as much as I can, and, and I'm gonna go ahead, I can move to nine o'clock position, have the patient move even a little bit further over. They're still not tipped over 45 degrees. They're just tipped over maybe 30. It's not very much. But by just having them tip a little bit away from you, you have a significant advantage. So now what I can do is I can retract with the mirror Okay, it takes, some, it takes some effort, 
retracts with the mirror, and then I can use the handpiece here with a finger rest, and I can do the buckle and the interproximal. I'm using direct vision. It's amazing. It's easy. I'm using direct vision. I can use second molar. I can even do third molar. Okay. We can then put the mirror, um, have the patient turn towards us. I'm at 9 o'clock. Now have the patient turn towards me, lean back the chair, turn a little bit towards me. I'm now back at 11 o'clock. I can do direct vision using the mirror just to reflect the light onto the handpiece, and now I can perform dentistry here at this particular position. You see where the finger rest is? At all times, the finger rest has to be somewhere. It might be on the opposite hand with stabilization of the handpiece, or it might be on the same hand that you're working on. What's the most difficult part of the whole thing? The distal lingual. See that right there? I'm looking direct vision, and occasionally I'm actually looking in the mirror itself. I'm not lining up the mirror in the, in the, in the three-way, I'm not sighting down the barrel like I was talking about earlier, but I'm, all, I'm using mostly direct vision, and I'm just verifying with the indirect vision. So I'm, I'm checking my, my motion and then verifying in the mirror, okay? We can do all kinds of things this way. How about an MO amalgam? Finger rest, upper jaw. Now, you could do finger rest on the lower jaw, finger rest on the upper jaw, okay? You could have your hand stabilizing on the other side and have your fingers helping to stabilize your handpiece like this. Let's take the mirror out and have your fingers stabilizing this way if you're doing really fine motor work. So both hands can be brought into the mix. The grab you want is this. This is called a modified pen grasp, and you can move your handpiece out and in, okay? You never want to grab the handpiece like this, like a regular pen grasp. You want to have a modified pen grasp, which requires two fingers on top with the thumb opposing the two fingers. It works fantastic for this kind of stuff. If you're working with a um, opposite side, Take advantage of direct vision as much as possible. So now I can retract the tongue and I can work on the opposite side here on the lingual very easily. I can have the patient turn towards me and I can work on the facial side of this tooth. Once again, with the finger rest. There's not a tooth in the mouth, a surface in the mouth, a preparation in the mouth that cannot be done with appropriate ergonomics, okay? Some are harder than others, and some parts of each tooth are harder than others. I would tell you that performing a DO on tooth number 31, for me, is probably one of the most difficult preps there is, a DO on 31. I don't mind doing the DO on 18. It's cross arch, I can do a lot of direct vision. For me, it's a lot easier than the, than the near vision where, where I'm kind of bunched up. I don't have as much room to to visualize to use my instruments. I'm more all collapsed over on the same side. For me, that's really hard. But anything on the maxilla is so simple. Three quarter crown, MOD onlay, seven eighths crown, MODO, buccal lingual, I don't care what it is. If it's on the maxilla, I own it, okay? On the lower, it's all a little bit tougher. But generally speaking, I would recommend whenever you're working on mandibular teeth, you consider the forgotten seven o'clock position. Amazingly effective, recline, seven o'clock, turning away and turning towards you, okay? So even though we have a highly restricted, very difficult, challenging cheek system here, you can attack any tooth there is. I need questions. Left-handed is exactly the same, you just have to change the numbers. Okay, so instead of seven, you're, you're at five. Instead of nine, you're at three. Instead of 11, you're at one. Okay, neither left-handed or right-handed gets to work at six o'clock. Okay, <laughs> six o'clock is for home use only. Okay. So, all right. Yeah, I, I divide and conquer, right? So we're gonna do a lot of lingual work from 12 o'clock because we can see a lot. We're gonna come in here as far as we can.
as close as we can to the interproximal, as close as we can to the interproximal. We're gonna do as much as we can do here. I'm gonna probably have to stabilize by using a finger rest like this if I need to, okay? I may have to then come over here to a seven or nine o'clock position. Nine o'clock's a good position too, and it's oftentimes not used. But nine o'clock with a little bit of the patient up will provide you with amazing direct vision on your mandibular first molar. Amazing. You can really get in here quite, quite well. This guy's cheeks are so tight, it's as tight as it gets. It's much more difficult than patients. I mean, I'm really having to yank. And rubber dam, when you place rubber dam on a patient, it'll pull it back like this. Okay, so I love rubber dam from a standpoint of retraction. It works really great for that kind of stuff. There's no, there's no tooth up here on the maxilla that you should be considering difficult. They're all very straightforward. The problem is you do them in the mirror. Okay? You do them in the mirror. That's the hard part. Okay? That's the hard part. When you're trying to troubleshoot a problem, I want you to think about a few things. I want you to think about, do you want the patient sitting up a little bit or laying back? So if you're having trouble with it up, try back. I want you to think about chair positions, seven, nine, 11, and 12. If it's not working at seven, move to nine. Not working at nine, move to 11 or 12. I want you to think about tipping the patient, tipping them to the right, tipping them to the left. That can help you as well. Those are also variables to consider. So reclined, supine, seven, nine, 11, and 12, to the left, to the right. Before you say, I can't do it, do all of those. And then, mirror versus direct. Mirror versus direct. Don't give up. So if you take a look at the, I can do reclined, 11 o'clock, direct vision. Patient's sitting there. I can do reclined, 11 o'clock, direct vision, away, towards, mirror, towards, mirror, away, all from this 11 o'clock position. I can recline them and do the exact same things. You get what I'm saying? So if you think about all those possibilities, you end up with about 28 to 30 different possible ways to approach things. So don't give up, just keep trying. Find the one that works best for you. Everyone's a little bit different. And one more thing, on every prep you ever encounter, there's one part that's hard. And there's one part that's easy. And when you get to the hard part, you'll say, this is hard. Let me go ask for help. And what does the help tell you? You're doing great, just keep doing it. You go, but it's hard. And I go, yeah, it's hard. You're like, oh, it's supposed to be hard? Yep, it's hard. And that's the way it is, guys. Gosh, I could do this part of the prep so fast and easy, but I'm gonna get to the distal lingual, I'm having such a hard time. I'm like, yeah, me too. But Dr. Stevenson, you've been doing it for 33 years. I go, it's still hard. You're like, oh, wow. And that's just the way it is. So you get 90% of the prep done quickly, and that last little 10% takes you almost as much time as the other 90% because it's a very difficult area. Just relax and understand that's the part that's hard.